Good evening, and welcome to this evening's virtual conversation with the president for families and parents of admitted students to the College of Charleston. I'm Devin Thompson, Senior Associate Director for Admissions Events, and I will be moderating tonight's event off camera. This is the first virtual event with the president for families of newly admitted students, and we thank you for your interest in participating. Joining me this evening are President Andrew Shu and members of the college's senior leadership team. To maintain social distancing, all presenters are participating remotely from separate locations. This evening's event will last about 30 minutes. We will start with opening remarks from President Shu and then jump into questions pre-submitted through the survey found in the event Evite. If we do not get to your questions this evening during the live event, please email your questions to admissionsevents at cfc.edu. This account is monitored frequently and we will respond to you as quickly as possible. Again, that email address is admissionsevents at cofc.edu. With that, I will turn it over to President Chu for opening remarks. President Chu. Thank you, Devin. I also want to personally welcome you to our virtual Future Families Town Hall meeting. I'm glad you could join us in this space. I wish we could be together in person. Truly, I imagine you are all very tired of looking at a computer screen. I know I am. April is such a beautiful time here in Charleston, and we would love to have you and your students on campus. Usually there is so much to enjoy, the weather, our beaches, our city, but like you, we're doing everything remotely and from our homes. We're all living in unusual times right now, and therefore we're all having to do some unusual things. I know how hard it is as parent to see your student's senior year just wiped away. My own daughter, who is a high school senior, certainly feels that way, and it has not been easy on our family. Our high school students have missed their proms, award ceremonies, spring projects, spring sports season, and all the other activities they were looking forward to. It doesn't seem fair, and it is. Life doesn't always follow the script we have written for it, so we have to adjust and adapt. That is what we will teach your students at the College of Charleston, how to adjust, how to be resilient. Through our liberal arts approach to education, they will learn how to handle adversity by developing the necessary critical thinking skills to adjust and adapt. No matter the major they choose or the discipline they decide to study, we will teach them problem solving skills. As you have seen firsthand through this crisis, no one has all the answers. Clarity, unfortunately, is a luxury of childhood. As we grow up, we have to make our own choices. At the College of Charleston, we will assist your students in the transition into adulthood, helping them become someone who can form educated opinions and then make their own educated choices. I want to thank you for your interest in the College of Charleston, and I want to applaud your students for being accepted. They are joining a community of scholars that will work hard for them and will work hard with you to unlock their full potential. If your student is hoping to change the world, I want to say to them, welcome to the front lines. Our university provides the true testing ground for new ideas and new solutions to age old problems as well as new challenges. Do they want to fight global climate change and the rising seas? Your student will join our faculty at the Bryce Marine Laboratory located on Charleston Harbor. Do they want to fight social justice? Your student will work side by side with our faculty in political science and women's and gender studies departments as well as the scholars 
in our Avery Research Center for African American History and Culture. Do they want to run the next Fortune 500 company? Your student will study under the country's top business researchers, design their own products in one of our many maker spaces, write their business plan as part of class, and launch their venture before or after graduation. Whatever their dream is, we have a community of scholars who can help your student make it come true. The College of Charleston is an old university. In fact, it is the oldest in South Carolina and the 13th oldest in the country. This year, we're celebrating the 250th anniversary of our founding in 1770. While we may be old, now more than ever, we're also bold. Bold is what the world needs from us right now. And bold is what the world needs from your sons and daughters. Your student has probably heard from many people that the college, that college is the best four years of your life. It sounds nice, but here we don't believe that. Yes, of course, the next four years will be fantastic, but we are preparing your student for a lifetime of great years, not just four. Remember, your student is still climbing and will always be. And we will help your student continue to ascend to find higher, much higher peaks in their lives. And if they tumble to a valley, we will prepare them so that they can pick themselves up and start climbing once again. We have a lot of questions we want to answer this evening. Before we begin, I want to reiterate that the decisions being made now and in the coming weeks are all being made with your students in mind. Everything we do will be about their safety, their well being, and with an eye towards delivering on the College of Charleston promise, whether in person or virtually. Because here at the College of Charleston, we believe that your students is joining our great family. I hope you enjoy the rest of this virtual experience and find it valuable. I can't wait to meet you in person when your sons and daughters become College of Charleston students. Thank you. Devin. Thank you, President Xu. We will now begin with our first question. Our first question. Will fall classes start online? If so, will they be offered this way for the entire semester? Or will they be offered in a combination of some online and some in-person coursework? Devin, this is Provost Welch and I'll answer that. I understand that there's a rumor that we will begin fall semester virtually and that rumor is not true. We've created a task force to work on plans for fall semester and our task force will create numerous scenarios to help us plan for fall semester. We're committed to being flexible and creative and following guidelines and requirements given to us by national, state, and local governments. We would like nothing more than begin in person in August but time and circumstances will guide our plans. We have multiple workshops for faculty this summer to help them become better professors at a distance in the event we have to begin fall semester online, but we haven't made that decision yet. It's just too early. Thank you, Professor Walt. Our next question. If students are not allowed to live on campus during the fall 2020 semester, Will they be expected to pay for the entire year? And will housing deposits be refunded? Good evening, everyone. I'm Alicia Cadell. I'm the Executive Vice President for Student Affairs at the college. And for housing, if we're not, if we change our schedule for housing, you'll be charged on a prorated basis based on the number of nights you end up staying in housing. If you do happen to, um, to cancel your housing, the $400 enrollment and housing deposit that you paid would then become applied to your bill. Thank you, Alicia. 
Our next question. Is the deadline for enrollment still May 1st? Will enrollment deposits be waived or refunded if our students plans change or we are financially impacted due to the COVID-19 pandemic? Good evening, Devin. Uh, this is Jimmy Foster and I can take that question. Um, I'm the Vice President for Enrollment Planning and University Marketing and I'd like to say first good evening and congratulations to everyone listening and watching tonight on your child's acceptance to the college. Uh, it was no small feat. It was, it was, they were a part of our largest applicant pool ever and it was quite an achievement to be admitted this year. As for the deadline, yes, uh, the deadline remains May 1st. However, the Office of Admissions will consider requests for an extension uh, or a refund for your deposit. And all you have to do is request that in writing to the Office of Admissions. Uh, for an extension for the request beyond May 1st, we're generally giving students until June 1st to make up their mind. So if they'd like that extra time, they can reach us at admissions at cfc.edu uh, and we can work that out individually with the student through their admissions counselor. Thank you, Jimmy. Our next question asks, our family has been impacted by COVID-19, loss of employment, loss of health insurance, et cetera. How is the college planning to help those incoming students who now need unexpected financial assistance? Hi, Devin, I'll take that question. My name is Erica and I'm the Associate Director for Scholarships in our Office of Financial Assistance and Veterans Affairs. Uh, parents and students have the option to submit a parent contribution adjustment request form. This form is available on our website at finaid.cfc.edu under the download forms section. By completing this form, it allows our office to reevaluate your student's eligibility for sources such as grant funding. Thank you, Erica. On to our next question. Will there be an increase in tuition for the fall 2020 spring 2021 school year? Devin, this is uh, President Andrew Hsu. Uh, we do not have a plan to increase tuition for next next year. Thank you, President Hsu. Our next question. What safeguards are being put into place to ensure students health and safety? What processes or policies have been changed in regards to requiring vaccinations if they become available? Yeah, Devin, hi, this is uh, Paul Patrick. I'll be happy to answer that question. I am the uh, Chief of Staff for President Shu uh, and also an alum of the College of Charleston. Uh, so on behalf of all of our alumni, uh, I would welcome you and your students to uh, what I certainly consider to be the best institution in the country. Uh, it certainly has done uh, remarkable things for me and my professional career, and it all can be traced back to the wonderful education uh, afforded to me by the College of Charleston. As far as our commitment to your students' health and safety, that is without question our number one commitment. Uh, we do have a mandatory vaccination policy. Uh, we require students fill out and uh, submit documentation of their vaccinations by June 1. Uh, if that documentation is not in, it may affect your students' ability to register during the orientation process. Right now, that policy conforms with the um, CDC guidelines of Tdap, MMR, and the meningitis vaccination. If the CDC uh, ends up uh, endorsing and recognizing a vaccination for COVID-19, and that becomes a uh, commonly accepted uh, vaccination and requirement for uh, public education, then I would certainly imagine that the college would conform its policy um, to include that vaccine as a requirement as well. Thank you, Paul. Our next question asks, will orientation be offered on campus this summer? If not, how will academic advising and course registration be handled for incoming students? So thank you, Devin. It's Provost Welch again. We look forward to welcoming all new students and families this summer um, during orientation. At this time, we've postponed the June orientation as well as the first orientation session in July. So we're working on beginning mid-July with hopefully on-campus orientations. 
but we are continuing to monitor health and safety concerns and we'll provide another update to you by the middle of May. Um, so rest assured, we, are, we will be having orientation this summer and all students will get a chance to connect with our wonderful student intern teams, our faculty members and others on campus to learn about the college, work with an academic advisor to review each student's academic plans and then to register for fall classes. And regardless of the format, we will ensure each new student learns about all the great resources we have here at the College of Charleston for our students. Thank you, Provost Welch. Our next question. For students who have completed the remainder of high school virtually through the use of a school provided technology, such as a Chromebook, iPad, etc. Will the College of Charleston be able to supply these students with similar resources if they do not have access to technology at home should classes be offered virtually in the fall? Uh, Devin, this is uh, President Andrew Hsu again. Uh, the simple answer is yes. Uh, we do not as a practice to provide every student uh, the technology they need. However, if a student have difficulties acquiring their own laptops or, um, or uh, Wi-Fi, then the college will work with individual students to help them meet their technology needs. Thank you, President Xu. Our next question asks, where does the college stand on deferrals, gap semester, or gap year plans now in light of the COVID-19 pandemic? Hi, Devin, this is Jimmy Foster again, and I'm happy to take that question. Uh, we realize that many students may want to consider the, delaying the start of their college career by a semester or two. And we want you to know that if that's what you're considering uh, to do, that we will try to help determine the best plan for your student individually with them. Uh, students would need to contact the Office of Admissions to request a delay of one or two semesters. And we will give students additional details about that individual process once they contact us. But I think it's really important to consider if your student does elect to take uh, a semester off, but they just end up taking classes somewhere else during that gap semester, they would then officially have to reapply to the college as a transfer student. So it's very important to keep that, that notion in mind. We're also researching the potential that our freshman scholarships could be honored for spring semester start as well as guaranteed housing, but we do not have a confirmation on either of those decisions just quite yet, but we expect one very soon and we'll communicate that to your students shortly. Thank you, Jimmy. Our next question. Will the new COVID-19 relief package impact new incoming students? Will it open up Pell Grant money for those who did not qualify previously? Hi, Devin, it's Erica again, and I'll take that question. Um, unfortunately, the funding allocated under the CARES Act is not available for entering freshman students. The language in that guidance requires that the funding be awarded to students that were enrolled at the College of Charleston during the spring 2020 semester. However, the PCAR process or the parent contribution adjustment request process can still be utilized by our entering freshman parents and families so that our office can reevaluate students for sources of aid such as the Pell Grant. Thank you, Erica. We'll move on to our next question now. We're from out of state and my daughter is set to enroll in the fall. If classes are offered virtually, will tuition be the same for both in and out of state students? Yeah, this is uh, Paul Patrick again. I'll be happy to, to answer that question. Uh, first of all, as, as Provost Welch shared earlier, we haven't made a decision on that. Uh, I certainly think I speak for everyone on the call that says that uh, it is our absolute number one desire to have students back on campus. It is a vastly different place for the worse, not having students on campus here on George Street. So we'll certainly do everything we can uh, if it's safe to bring students back in the fall. If we can't, uh, whether or not tuition is the same for in-state and out-of-state has not yet been determined. I certainly think President Shu has been very clear about this, that 
Uh, he feels that if we're going to be entirely online for the fall semester, then certainly uh, our ability to be able to charge normal tuition is going to be diminished. And so I would fully expect that there would be a reduction in tuition if we're fully online, but whether or not the tuitions match for resident and non-resident is yet to be determined. Thank you, Paul. Our next question asks, is it fair to assume that an acceptance letter from the College of Charleston will guarantee admission in the fall if my student's high school has not released an updated graduation plan and we do not know when to expect a final high school transcript or diploma release? What if my student's school has gone to pass fail for the remainder of the year? Hi, Devin, this is Jimmy Foster, the VP for enrollment uh, again, and I'd be happy to take that question. Uh, parents need to know that we're going to work with students, um, especially if they have a delayed graduation or if the final high school transcripts are delayed. Uh, we generally expect records to arrive by the time students come for orientation, but because of the difficulty many of our students are experiencing, we want to be flexible with those circumstances. So we're also not going to penalize students for uh, pass fail grades on transcripts. But for our South Carolina families, they need to make sure that remember that we must be uh, able to abide by the South Carolina regulations in terms of awarding state lottery scholarships. We we'll also review all final transcripts that we receive from students for sustained academic achievement and obviously reserve the right to rescind admission if a student's record declines significantly. But we're also keeping in mind the incredible challenges that high school seniors are facing in this class particularly and what you've had to endure. So we're going to work the best we can with each of those students who come across some difficult situations. Thank you, Jimmy. Our next question asks, if classes continue virtually into the fall semester, how will the learning experience at the College of Charleston be distinctive from other universities now online? Will students complete, how will students complete research projects, internships, etc.? This is Provost Welch again, Devin, and I'll take that question. Um, we're ha we, we have workshops for our faculty members throughout the summer to help them prepare to offer effective instruction at a distance, if that becomes necessary. They are learning synchronous and asynchronous approaches to teaching and learning. Our faculty members, I think you know this, are very creative. So I'm sure there will be interesting and innovative classes and courses. One faculty member this semester when we had to go online created a play with his students while they were learning at, at a distance. Our resources at Addlestone Library are available at a distance and are impressive. And, and they truly do assist with learning. And as we have this semester, we will continue with research and internships and other high touch learning activities, while of course we will follow all necessary safety and health precautions. Thank you, Provost Welch. Moving to our next question. We have seen the financial aid package offered by the College of Charleston, and there is still a gap remaining. What other avenues can I explore to help cover the additional expenses? Devin, it's Erica and I'll be happy to answer that question. I would recommend starting with our outside scholarship database on our website. There are a list of scholarship databases there that students can use. Parents have the option to apply for the Federal Direct Parent Plus Loan, which is a loan that's in the name of the parents. That application will be available to complete online via studentloans.gov beginning in mid-May. The next option is private or alternative loans, and these can be applied, obtained excuse me, from places like your bank or entities like Sally Mae. We also have a listing of lenders that College of Charleston students have used in the past on our website, and you have the option to compare lenders within that portal of the website. And the last option is the semester payment plan. This allows you to break up the remaining semester balance after financial aid has been applied, and you can break that up into either three, four, or five payments. Additional information about this option is available on the website of the treasurer's office. 
Thank you, Erica. We're now moving on to our last question of the question and answer uh, panel period. This question asks, should fall classes be offered virtually? How is the college planning to provide community for students virtually, particularly for the new incoming cohort? Hi everyone, this is Alicia Cadill again from Student Affairs, and I really appreciate this question. I hope that you've had a chance to visit our campus, and if you haven't had a chance to be with us yet, I hope that you've spent a lot of time on our virtual tours. And you know that the college is a beautiful place that has a lot of opportunities for you to be connected. But the most important thing about the College of Charleston community is not really our beautiful campus. It's the people that are here. It's your families, it's your students, um, it's all of you and all the faculty and staff who are here with you. So we are doing a lot of things to make sure that regardless of where we are engaging together in the fall semester, there is a way for you to be part of this community. And your interest in the college lets us know that you understand this magic already. So we have a lot of things for you you and then are certainly here to help you find those connections if you're not sure. I'm going to glance at my notes because there's too many for me to even remember. Uh, the community will start with orientation that Provost Welch mentioned, which would be um, online or in person. We will create groups and ways for you to connect with students. Uh, we will start building community in the residence halls right away. Our resident assistants would be reaching out to students remotely even to help build and connect uh, those students that will be living on the same floors and the same residence halls. Our SPECTRA program, which is our program to support our incoming students of color, will happen this summer either remotely or in person. We certainly hope in person, but those connections will then also continue for those students through the fall semester and into spring next year. We have a number of programs from Student Life, including we're set up to be ready to do a virtual student organization fair, all kinds of activities and events uh, that you can engage in remotely to meet other students and to connect with them. We have a lot of campus recreation opportunities. All of our services are here to support you remotely and to engage with you in different ways. And we have even a lot of remote community service opportunities and ways for you to connect with other students that way. But also, we know you've been in this learning environment in your high school as you finish up your time there. So if you have good ideas as to how you want us to create ways for you to connect, we look for your ideas as well. And we're here to make sure we can support you and help you find those people that make our community really special because you will be one of them and we can't wait for that. Thank you, Alicia. That concludes our question and answer portion of this evening's event. Before we turn it back to President Shu for closing remarks, I'd like to remind you all to encourage your students to register for this Saturday's virtual accepted student day event from 2 to 4 p.m. Admitted students received an invitation to register in their email. Registration can also be completed on our new Virtual Visitor Center website under the Admitted Students section. If you've not yet explored the Virtual Visitor Center site, please take time to do so with your student as there are a variety of resources available. Everything from webinars from each of our academic schools, opportunities to register for live chats with our school deans, financial aid sessions, academic advising webinars, and more. With that, I will now turn it back over to President Shu for closing remarks. Thank you, Devin. I know we did not get to all of your questions today, but I hope this session provided you some insight into the College of Charleston. After tonight, feel free to send your questions to our admission staff and we will get answers to you as quickly as possible. I also encourage you all to get more closely connected to the college through our various social media channels. Please follow the college's main institutional social media channels on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you want to connect with me personally, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I try to post fairly frequently. And if you like music, you may enjoy some of my Spotify playlist. Twice a semester, I compile a playlist of songs recommended to me by students, faculty, staff, and my own daughters. Of course, I sneak in some of my own personal favorites, mostly classical music. 
but following us on social, you will get a pretty good sense of life on campus. And it is also a great way to keep up on things happening within our community. Again, I offer my sincere thanks to all of you for participating tonight. I can't wait to see you in person and welcome you and the students of the class 2024 to campus. Until then, please be safe. Good night.